Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Martine Felton and I'm an artist and illustrator. Um, I haven't done one of these sit down chatty videos in a very long time. Um, I've pretty much just been doing overhead art and I kind of want to change that. Um, so that's one of the things that we'll be talking about in this video. Um, for those of you that are new, um, this used to be a tarot um, channel. I used to do my tarot readings for all the zodiac signs. I used to do sound healing with my crystal um, sound healing bowls and all the things. This is was basically tarot, astrology, sound healing, metaphysical channel. <laughs> Um, but I have since then transitioned into creating art. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't do tarot readings anymore or I can't or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm just not doing it on this channel. This is going to be, will, will be and remain my art channel. Um, I kind of want to start another channel like for that, my tarot readings and kind of start fresh on that. So I'm just toying with, I'm considering that, but that would have nothing to do with this channel because this channel is going to remain um, to follow my art journey of becoming an illustrator, um, all my findings, all my sketchbook work, my sketchbook shenanigans, as it were. And just even I'm going to start making vlog style videos as well. I'm going to try, guys. I'm going to try. Um, transitioning into art. I was really called, but right, like, let me start that over. I was really called to focus on my art and that's kind of the reason why I've kind of stepped back from doing tarot. It's not because I don't believe in it anymore or, you know, Jesus has spoken to me and told me to stop. Um, I got to a point where I was really questioning my path and you know, my spiritual path and asking, asking myself the why, you know what I mean? Why am I doing this really? Like I wasn't satisfied with my why as far as why I was reading tarot. Um, Cause I asked myself the question and I wasn't satisfied with my response and I'm not going to really share my response, but I wasn't happy with it. And so that's why I decided to take a break um, and work towards a better why. Um, then art came along. Well, actually, art came along before that or I was started focusing on art like simultaneously to that period where I was asking myself the whys. So here I am going into year two of this artistic journey. Um, just learning everything I can get my hands on, really. I first started painting and um no first I started art journaling then painting I moved on to painting and I you know I didn't know much about like I've always been a lover of art I've always wanted to be an artist but as far as the execution of art and the materials 
So I automatically just go to Michael's and buy canvases and acrylic paint and brushes and have a go. Um, and I like painting. I really enjoyed myself and I have quite a few paintings on canvas that I created that I love. But I wanted to really draw. I wanted to really illustrate. I wanted to really learn my visual language. And um, as time went on, I started trying out new art materials and um, being introduced to a lot of mediums. And so I've kind of built a, a kind of process for myself and I'm getting comfortable in um, that process and it's allowing for my style to really come through. And my style is not typical. I like abstract when it comes to paintings. I like abstract paintings. I like um, like expressionism. Um, I don't like um, realistic art because I feel like for that you can take a photo. <laughs> um, I like to see how another person visualizes what they're painting or drawing in their own visual language. I really believe that, that everyone, when it comes to art, everyone has their own visual language and so i'm going to be exploring all of that on this channel um, i've decided to really focus on my youtube channel because i want it to grow I'm, I'm i'm doing it because i like it but also i want my i want my channel to grow obviously i want to build a community here i want to build an authentic community here i just don't want to be putting out videos every day, all day, and um, it not be, you know, quality or, uh, you know, I don't want that. So I want to build a legitimate, consistent community here um, that of artists that are supportive and inclusive. This is an inclusive community. Um, like I said, I want to start recording vlog-like content as well. And I want to start doing live streams too as well. So I have all these ideas running around, flip-flopping in my head. And I just basically want my channel to grow as much as possible. And I want to take you guys along this artistic journey with me as I grow as an artist, as I grow as an illustrator and pursue a career in illustration. Um, because I would like my art um, and writing to be my livelihood one day. Um, I would love to see my art in stores on products, on clothes, on, you know, stationery, um, greeting cards. I want that all for myself. I want to see my art on a greeting card in Target or Walmart or CVS. Um, who doesn't want that? And so that's where we're going this week, this year. <laughs> I said this week. <coughs> that's where we're going this year. In 2024, we want more, okay? So, lately, I've been just letting go. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was really obsessing about getting my portfolio together for children's illustration work, and I'm still doing that, but I'm really taking my time. Um, 
I felt really pressured because I'm in between jobs right now. And so while looking for a job, um, I was kind of like putting pressure on myself to build portfolio pieces um, that I'm not really ready, you, you know, to do. Like I'm was kind of, I have a portfolio, but it's not complete. Let's be honest. It's not complete. What I have in it so far, I do like, but I know that I need so much more. Okay. And I want to take my time in creating those pieces and um, learning what I need to learn and um, experimenting and all of the things. So I'm going to be taking my time on formulating my portfolio. I have a lot of ideas and I'll probably share that as well, creating pieces for my portfolio. But lately, as I started to say in my sketchbooks, I've been being a lot more expressive and loose and, you know, less tight. And that's how I started off, you know, abstract. Um, being expressive in my mark making just that's what I like you know I like um landscapes I love drawing landscapes I love drawing still lifes and um urban sketching um I like all of that and I don't know why I was just so focused on children's illustration. I mean, I know there's a market for it, um, you know. <clears throat> um, I guess I was being, I felt pressured because I'm in between jobs. And I'm, I still am in between jobs. I'm interviewing and things like that um, because my nine to five job is I'm an editor. I work in the editorial space. Um, I'm an editor. I'm a development editor. And um, so that's what I do as my job. And I like my job. Don't get me wrong. I like it. Um, so I think two things can be true at the same time. Or even three things could be true at the same time. I can be an intuitive I can be a sound healer, <laughs> you know, I can be an illustrator and I can be an editor from nine to five. Why not? OK, and so those are all the parts of me. And um, I was just like feeling like I needed to suppress my intuitive side. And because people are going to think I'm weird, I'm, I'm a intuitive artists but that's not weird all artists have a level of intuition highly highly intuitive a lot of artists that i i know and meet are literally ch channeling their pieces and they don't even know it um so that is it's okay and i had to tell myself that i had to come to terms with it's okay to have different interests. It's okay. <laughs> and, you know, it's our job to nurture those interests and go along on that journey, follow the breadcrumbs. And whatever steps forward for you is for you. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. It's not for you. So... I say all that to say I'm going to take you guys along on this journey. This week, I did a lot of different types of work in my sketchbook. And I will take you guys overhead so I can show you. Okay, guys, here we are. Um, I have a couple of sketchbooks here that I just wanted to show you and
and um, talk you through or whatever. So anyway, I was saying, like I was saying, I love doing landscapes um, and I like, and I love children's illustration as well, but I also don't want to pigeonhole myself. And I feel like my stuff can be really children's illustrate <laughs> I don't know if that's the word, but even some of these that I'm about to show you can, can be considered or can be real like backgrounds for children's illustration books, like, like this spread. Um, this rabbit looks crazy, but I love the fox. <laughs> Um, you know, stuff like this. This is a Strathmore watercolor um, book. So the, the pages are super, super sturdy and, you know, can take a lot of water. You know, stuff like this. This is what I like to draw. And this stuff like this are found in children's books. Um, so I'm just allowing myself to draw what I like, okay? Um, and really trying, at the same time, trying to understand the market and see where my art can fit in, okay? Instead of me trying to fit in the market, um, by doing, by focusing on one particular type of art and stressing myself out, um, I'm just gonna do what I like and let the rest come naturally and hope for the best. So yeah, this was a storefront. This is unfinished, but these were um, like oranges. I did this with, a wa with watercolor brush pens and then I did the same one with gouache um yeah all right but let me show you guys what I really wanted to show you so this is just a real expressionist landscape um yeah um, this is right here, some water, some cl a cliff, some hills back there, vegetation, tree, and things like that. And houses. <laughs> that is something that I've been drawing as since I was a little kid. Um, always, it was always like a landscape and a little house, you know, or two. So I decided to just give in to that and let that come through, okay? More like this is like a field of flowers. The houses, the landscapes, this I love. I love this. I love the colors I use. I love the quirkiness of it. I just, I really love this. Um, this one as well. This I, this I let all my wonky, wonkiness come through in this one. Um, this is unfinished. I don't know where I was going with it, and it was I was using inks. I was playing around with layering crayons on top of acrylic inks. Um, so the the first layer, the green, the brown, the yellow. That's all ink acrylic inks and then I layered some pencil on top and I had every intention of going in with like some pastels like crayons or what have you but then I got turned around and I just never went back to it still life I love to do these still life sometimes my vases my vessels I I realize that I make them too big after because I just like to go big and and I have a, a larger sketchbook I think I'm going to start using it and just 
start really um, allowing myself to go big like I really want to. This was an etcher, a free et etcher workshop. Um, for those of you that know that art brand, they make um, sketchbooks, I guess, primarily. Um, and the sketchbooks are supposed, I don't have an etcher sketchbook because they're super expensive, but I just don't want to invest in that type of money right now in a sketchbook. But this was a, a workshop um, that they had online with Melissa Lakey. And I follow her on Instagram too. She's a really great artist. So this is what we drew in that workshop. This I got from a picture on Pinterest which was one of Emma Carlyle's um, Pinterests, and I just wanted to remake it. It came out all wrong. Obviously, <laughs> Emma's does not look like this, um, but she's another great, wonderful artist as well. Um, you can catch her stuff on Patreon, and she does have an Instagram as well. Um, so this, oh, I love this landscape. I love it, love it, love it. I love the colors I used. I kind of messed it up over here because um, I felt like, like there was just too much blue over here. But everything else I love, ducks, all of it. Um, yes, love this one. This one was supposed to be, this one came was taken from a reference I took. This is a lake. This is a lake that I usually go to. And this is like a weeping willow tree that kind of hangs over the lake. Um, usually has a lot of ducks in there in the lake. So this is it. I, I didn't complete this one as well. Um, I didn't like, well, the reason why it's not completed is because I stopped because I just didn't like it. And so I just decided to move on. Um, this you might have saw in my previous video it was a time lapse of an expression. What did I call it? Expressive landscape. So, yeah, a little houses, the landscape. And I just wanted to use colors that were not like normal for a landscape. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this right here, I like interiors as well. And drawing interiors has always been, been a thing for me. Um, but I have, I was putting too much thought into it, like trying to be realistic. And I know I don't like realism. Um, I prefer things abstract. I prefer things wonky. But when I would sit down to draw sometimes, I would, you know, especially if I was using a reference, you know, I'm trying to, I would try to, I would be so overwhelmed with the details was the problem. And um, so every time I sit down to draw now, it's like, simplify, 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 Martine. You are not trying to make it look like the reference. You're just using elements of the reference to, to draw it and make it your own. So, and I still have to tell myself that because I don't know. I don't know if this happens to other artists as well. Like you just, when you sit down to draw and you're looking at a reference, you start trying to make it look like the reference when that wasn't your intention in the first place. But anyway, this, I mean, I just did this off of imagination. <laughs> this cat is missing a leg or two. Um, <laughs> but I just decided to move on because I got frustrated because I kind of screwed up the cat. Um, yeah, this is just a vase with some flowers. And I had pre-treated the paper so I had like put washes of ink tents as the backgrounds. And that's why, you know, it has these colored backgrounds like this one. I was doing a tutorial 
from one of the Patreons that I follow, Paulina. Uh, she is amazing. I love her art. And um, so we were just doing a bicycle. And that tutorial was about simplifying shapes, helping you to simplify shapes. Um, so, okay, this was another Paulina tutorial or demo that I was trying to follow along and I did this was the one I did first on this side and then I decided to do it again so that I can compare and I saw it I went on this page for the second try the second try I you can tell it's a lot more tighter um this one is very much loose very much not knowing, you know, just trying to follow somebody and on in the tutorial. And then the second one, I was taking my time and doing it off of this. I was looking at this, but then I was like, this is going to look better than this. So anyway, it's a lot more tighter, but um, I still like it. But yeah, and that's. Obviously, you can tell that's inside of a restaurant. Um, this was Neo Colors. This was all Neo Color 2s in this um, still life here. This one, I mean, I could take it or leave it. I like it, but it's not my best work. Um, yeah, I was like really into color. On this day, like I wanted to use um like colors that were not you know are not normal in a landscape blue trees as you can see yellow sky so yeah i was just really messing around with color that day and seeing what colors i like together okay so more landscapes more bold un unlikely colors for landscapes Again, I love a blue tree. I love a blue tree. And this, this was inspired by a Pinterest I saw, but the col colors were totally different, but it was this type of scribbly landscape that I really, really fell in love with. And these are all, these two pages are done exclusively, exclusively with Neo Color 2s. Um, okay, let me take this page. So this was from a reference photo that I got on Instagram. Um, these are pumpkin squash. And this is like the chopped up, like the skins of the pumpkin. Um, the picture was basically two people chopping up the pump pumpkin squash, preparing it for Haitian Independence Day. I got this off of a Haitian Instagram um, account. And, you know, the pumpkin squash is what we use to make our pumpkin soup for Haitian Independence Day, which is January 1st. So I just wanted to draw that picture and this is what I came up with. I decided to leave the two people out and you know I, I did my best in this and I and I kind of like it it could be better but it was my first time really drawing um actually no I've drawn pumpkins before during Thanksgiving but I kind of like it I did this in gouache cut and colored pencils yep Oh yeah, another meal that I got on that same Haitian Instagram account. This was a plate of food. I believe I posted this on Instagram as well and the the reference I posted as well on Instagram. It came out this came out really nice. I like it cuz this is spaghetti. Um one uh, a really common Haitian meal is spaghetti with sausage. And then you have like lettuce and avocado and boiled eggs. 
and tomatoes and then it had it had white onions on it but I didn't draw the white onions um, these are just me messing around with I was messing around with Payne's gray I was trying to make some chairs and some stools but they came out all weird um, I was messing around with my Prismacolor watercolor pencils and um, this I got from an ad in a magazine. It was a refrigerator, an ad for a refrigerator. So I decided to draw it in my own way. And here I'm just um, drawing like interior elements. Like I wanted to practice drawing tables and stools and things that you would find on your table, on your in your home, like a stove, counter, um, pendant light, chairs, things like that. I was just um, practicing drawing these things. And um, I did this one, this is on drawing paper, this interior. Um, I don't think I posted this, but it's okay. I mean, it's not my best work. The dog didn't really come out the way I wanted it to, but it's okay. I mean, for pra it's for practice sake. It's not like I was trying to do, you know, a finished piece. And this is another interior that I got um, this reference from a magazine as well. Just, you know, the black table and chairs and the blue walls really caught my eye. So I wanted, I think I'm going to do this over and more, more finished, more like just do it again. Um, yeah. So moving on, um, this was, I was doing a replay of a drawing session that I watched um, uh, at, of the Introvert Drawing Club on Substack. So I caught the replay and they were drawing ducks. And so I just followed along. And these are all timed drawings. I don't remember how long the time was. Maybe I feel like 10 minutes each. I'm not sure. Oh, I have a skipped page here. Oh no, that's it. That's it for this sketchbook so far. It's not done. I still have a ways to go on that one. So here, again, drawing, still drawing chairs. I think I was following a Patreon tutorial here as well, still like drawing chairs and um, boats and things like that. Um, this is a still life that I just drew randomly from my imagination. Um, yeah, this was a fail. This was another fail. Um, and then um, I took a reference, um, a reference photo from a Patreon that I follow again, Paulina. Um, yeah, so it came out okay. You know, I, I really need to do this one again. I like to do drawings two or three times to really, you know, get the, the feel of it and get comfortable with you know, the image. So this came out okay, but it could have been better, obviously. Okay, so this was Art Hang Party. This was Art Hang Party on Thursday, last Thursday with Melissa Martin. And this was live on YouTube on her channel. Go follow her channel. Um, I'll think I'll, I'll list it below of the things that I've mentioned in this video. Um, go subscribe to her channel. She does lives every Thursday of timed drawings. So this is one of them. It was, the theme was cats with people. So, you know, um, I had went back to kind of refine this one. It's still like her hand. I am so horrible with hands. It's not even funny. This hand's horrible. Look at this. This looks like, she looks like she's wearing a rubber glove. Um, okay, so that was that, people with cats. 
um, this, I think this was the first drawing actually. And I always do horrible. Like I need to warm up at least by with like four or five drawings before my stuff starts looking normal. Okay, so people with, I like this, these two. This was, this was, these look okay to me. Um, these two, not so much, but I still shared it. <laughs> um, I shared this one. I didn't share this one. But anyway, I'm sharing it now. Um, yes, we're still in ha Art Hang Party, people with cats. These did not come out right. And this one definitely didn't come out right. But it's, it's okay. Um, that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> So another Patreon live Zoom session with Sarah Dyer. She's another on Patreon I follow as well. Really like her work. She is a very, very nice person. Um, so this one, I think it was black and white photos. Yes, black and white photos. So I like this one. This was supposed to be a little boy, although his face looks like an old man <laughs> with the body of a little boy holding hands with a penguin. It was so cute. Um, so here we have more black and whites. Um, this was supposed to be a little girl, again. She looks like an, a grandma, her face with the body of a little girl. So, you know. This one woman driving with a swan in her back seat. Um, and these were all black and white photos. This gentleman holding a pile of vegetables. I really enjoyed this one. This um, Patreon. This was a really cool picture. The reference photo was really, really cool. Um, and what else? Okay. And this one was the last drawing I did in that session like this one too don't like how her face and her nose specifically came out but i still like it overall um yeah so that was it for that um, um session so now this is another session with paulina this was the live that we did on i did on friday as well Sarah's was on Friday. Well, Melissa's was on live was on Thursday on YouTube. Sarah's was on Friday and Paulina's was on Friday as well. So I was like living it up with this weekend um, with drawing sessions. I really love it. So we were drawing German towns. And so this was the warm up. Uh, yeah told you guys I need to warm up a lot um the reference this was the number number one number three and eh, this is okay and I didn't finish this one I think I got frustrated um more German towns and you know we were just zooming in on particular buildings that we wanted to zoom in on so it wasn't like we were drawing the entire we had to draw the entire thing you could if you wanted to but I just zoomed in on you know particular parts of the picture um this was supposed to be um the vantage point was above and it was supposed to be like a whole bunch of little houses but like I say I always end up going too big and it gets annoying sometimes so that was it for that session. And this book is actually finished. So I'll probably do a tour of this book coming soon. Yeah, because this was the, there's only one page left in here. So, and I don't know if I'm going to do anything in it maybe. But if I do, then I will share um, the tour for that. Okay, so last but not least, this sketchbook that I literally just bought on Friday at five below for five bucks. It's a watercolor sketchbook. It has watercolor paper in it. It has this back flap in here. 
um, and it's from Five Below, like I said. Um, this is a watercolor sketchbook, and it's eight by eight. I think that's what it says, right? Eight by eight. And the paper is like 300 GSM. So it's really good paper. Um, and then, you know, it has a flap in the back. And then the last page has this like pull out um, page like that, which I think accordion page, which I think is so cool. Um, I, at first I thought the whole book was like that. I was like, yes, five bucks. But no, it was just the last page. So immediately, you know, I had to try the sketchbook and go in with my customary landscape, expressive landscape. And these, this was Neo Color 2. And this was Prussian Blue Neo Color 2s. I know that for a fact. And then I think I used Derwent, um, that pan, the graphite pan set. Okay, this right here, I love the way this came out. I love this so much. Um, I was following um, an old drawing session from Patreon. I was looking at a reference, used, I used a reference, and I drew this. And these are all the products that I used here. And I really liked the way this came out. Um, so then I did another one, the following reference. It didn't come out so well because the it was a stove, but the whole stove was black. And then it was weird, like with, you know, trying to allow the other things to come through. Um, I don't really like it. It's I don't hate it, but I don't really like it. Um, so then this spread is from a reference I took from that I had in my phone from the lake. Um, it was actually from the beginning of fall when the leaves were starting to turn and that's why we have this just this little bit of orange leaves right there um yes I think it was around October September something like that but I really like the way this came out again Neo Color 2s this was um Sunny Sennelier 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 inks let me see. Yeah, these, these ink pens from Sennelier are really, really good. Um, so the yellow, well, the green and the umber ochre color, I mean, those were ink pens. And then the rest is Neo Color 2 with the trees and stuff and the vegetation in the front. Um, Neo Color 2s. Isn't it? Yeah, Neo Color 2s and colored pencils here, Prismacolor pencils. These were Prismacolor pencils that I used here. And I used some Neo Color 2 for this right here. But the majority of this is all Prismacolor pencils. Kind of like it. I like the way it came out. And um, this is the last spread. I recently, I think I posted this today on my Instagram. This was from, this is my kitchen, one side of my kitchen, cause I have like a galley kitchen, which has two sides. Um, so yeah, I really like this. Although I wish that I didn't go so bright on the background. Um, but otherwise than that, I, I really like the way the textures, um, how expressive it is. Um, you know, I can't say that enough. You know, that that's what I like. That's what I'm into. And yeah, so that's it. That's the last thing that I drew in my new sketchbook. And guys, this sketchbook is in five below. It's a watercolor sketchbook. They have different colors. They have a nice blue one as well and a black one. Go get you a and Oh, I forgot to mention, this is not cold pressed. This is hot pressed paper. This is very smooth, as you can see. So this is smooth, hot pressed paper. And that's what even impressed me even more. So I got two and um, I hope 
I'm hoping that they have more so next time I can go back and stock up because who gets a hot pressed watercolor book for five dollars? That's unheard of, okay? And it's good quality. Look at this, for $5, hot press, 300 GSM paper, boom. You can't beat that with a bat, guys. All right, so I will leave this video here. I know it's kind of long, but you know, I just wanted to reintroduce myself, reintroduce, um, I just wanted to reintroduce myself and let you guys know in what direction, what I plan on doing um, with this channel moving forward. I thank you for watching and giving me your time and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.